Joining us now is Bob Schieffer, CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent and host of Face the Nation from Houston. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. Uh, and presidential historian and CBS News consultant Doug Brinkley. Good morning to you both. Good morning. There you go. Bob, let me start with you. Your ref reflections and thoughts this morning. Well, Ted Kennedy was from a different age. He was from a different Senate, and that's why we'll never see anybody quite like him again. Uh, he came from the, uh, from the age when uh, the Senate floor was trod by giants, when people got elected to the Senate uh, for more than just their ability to be able to raise large sums of money. Uh, he knew the other senators. Uh, they respected him. He had this great ability uh, to reach across the aisle and work with his uh, political opposites. I don't think we will ever uh, see uh, that kind of uh, person again in the United States Senate. Uh, he he just uh, he was just from a different time, and he was he had been there so long, Harry. It's going to be hard to imagine Washington without him. Mm. He he was one of those figures that became just kind of part of the landscape. Yeah. Uh, Doug Brinkley, you think about this family, the oldest brother dies a hero, the next brother, a hero in World War II, becomes president, gets assassinated. 1968, Bobby Kennedy gets assassinated. This gaping family legacy, shoes that ultimately were or were not filled. Well, you're correct. I mean, he's the only one of the Kennedy boys that died of natural causes. And uh, I put a tremendous amount of stress on him. He was always living in the shadow, first of his father, then his three older brothers. But he really rose uh, to become this giant that we're talking about. And it was a bit of a process. When he came into the Senate in 1962, he was the junior Kennedy. But he immediately embraced the Civil Rights Acts of 64, gave a very moving maiden speech about that and then slowly built this incredible record. I mean, he's like a walking new deal of acronyms of all of the programs mm. that he sponsored for family assistance and equal opportunity. And the, in fact, it's hard to sum up his legacy. The bottom line is he looked at the middle class and anybody below that line, and he was determined to make people in poverty or below the middle class and middle classes lives richer in America. And this notion of health care became the passion for him. It's the issue that we're going to remember him in history most for, and it's ironic that he died uh, right on the eve of what's bound to be the biggest health care fight we've had in this country since the Great Depression. Mm. Bob, talk for a moment about Ted Kennedy's ability to reach across the aisle, because as we were speaking with uh, 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 Katie earlier uh, this morning, this notion that on one hand, he's a liberal line, and on the other hand, he was one of the most vilified characters in the country. Well, he was, but uh, he was not vilified in the United States Senate. He was, he was the target. Uh, he was the poster boy for big government and liberalism. Uh, people would use that in their campaign ads. But he had this great personal relationship within the Senate with people of all ideological stripes. I would think, Harry, that if you took a secret ballot uh, of the United States Senate, uh, that he would emerge as the most popular. Uh, people just liked him because they respected him. They knew when they had a cause and they could get Ted Kennedy on their side, they had a better chance of winning. They knew when he was going to be against them, it was going to be more difficult to pass that bill. But it was these relationships that he was able to form that we do not see today uh, in, 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 in the modern Senate. Uh, they, these, uh, these were relationships like LBJ had, like uh, Everett Dirksen had, John Sherman Cooper, uh, Russell Long. Uh, in, in those days, say 30 years ago, it was an entirely different world. I don't think we will see it again because mm. it's, it's such a different way that we go about electing people today. Mm. And so much of it now depends not on relationships and ideology, but simply upon, upon who can raise the most money. Bob Schieffer, Doug Brinkley, thanks very much. I'm sure we'll have lots more to talk about it as the morning goes on. Appreciate it.